So hi everyone and welcome to this relatively short video on special indifference curves and homothetic preferences. So in the last video, we took quite a deep dive on the concept of an indifference curve and we said that it was some graphical manner by which we can represent consumer, uh, consumers' preferences and indeed utility. So uh, we said that indifference curves were generally downward sloping and strictly convex and we proved those properties uh, in the last video. So uh, while the typical shape of an indifference curve may look something like the one I'm drawing now, right? So you have a downward sloping strictly convex curve. There are cases wherein uh, there are special indifference curves which may look a little bit different from your typical indifference curve and they represent specific types of goods. So the first case is that we could have an indifference curve for perfect substitutes. So perfect substitutes are goods wherein you can substitute one for the other in, uh, in a perfect way, as, as the name implies. So uh, trading off one good for another doesn't really change your utility. You can trade them off at a ratio of one is to one. You don't care uh, because it gives you the exact same thing. So if I kind of draw the graph for a perfect subject, substitute, it looks kind of like this. So I have x2 here, and then I have a, a x1. Oh, uh, let me just make it a bit more straight. So I have x1 here. Essentially, um, for perfect substitutes, the indifference curves look like uh, just a line. So they're just lines like that. They're, they're downward sloping, yes, but fundamentally not strictly convex. Right, so they're just lines like that. So this represents U1, a higher utility level than say U0. And uh, notice a particular property with it is that the MRS will be constant along the indifference curve. And you see that this is the case. So whether you are at point A, at point B, at point C, your uh, MRS is relatively the same. It remains constant, it doesn't change. Again, because you are just willing to substitute one for the other freely. So the indifference curves do remain downward sloping, but they are now weakly convex. They are basically linear in this particular case. So that's the case for a perfect substitute. So another thing that we have is a perfect complement. So the indifference curves for perfect complements are, are L-shaped. So in order for you to increase consumption in one good, you need to increase also the consumption in another good to attain higher utility level. So uh, it looks something like this. Say I have x2 here. Okay, uh, whoops. Let me just make this a bit more straight, x2. And then say I have x1 here, x1. So it looks like an L shape. So it looks something like this, right? So you, you just have an L, whoops. So they're just basically L shaped in different curves. So L, another one. Another. So this is U0, U1. So notice that uh, typically, uh, if say I have point A here, right? Say I have point A. Point A contains this much of X2, X2A, and this much of X1A, right? So in order for me to potentially increase my utility to another level, I need to uh, increase, I, I can hold this. Uh, a constant say at a but i could i need to be able to consume uh say a prime i need to be able to consume more of x1 so x a1 prime and i uh, i have the same level of here right so uh th that's the case for a particular perfect complement so note uh the indifference curves are still weakly convex so in order for me to potentially go to a higher utility level, I can only do that by choosing more of the two goods together. And that's the only way that utility, utility could potentially be increased, right? So that's, uh, that's uh, the case of a particular special indifference curve. The next one, which is on our agenda, is on homothetic preferences. So essentially, this is just some sort of property of the marginal rate of substitution, which states that the MRS, uh, if the MRS depends only on the ratios of the amounts of the two goods, not on the quantities of the goods, so the ratio of the amounts of the two goods. So if 
the MRS depends on the ratio of the amount of the two goods, not on the sheer quantities of the goods, then the utility function is said to be homothetic. So uh, if you look at this, so notice that uh, we have here the marginal rate of substitution for a typical Cobb-Douglas function. So how did we derive this? Say our typical Cobb-Douglas Cobb is x1 raised to alpha, x2 raised to beta. Well, u1 or that first order derivative of the utility function with respect to x1 is just alpha x1 alpha minus 1, x2 raised to beta. Then u2 is going to be equal to the partial of the utility function with respect to x2. So this is equal to beta x1 alpha x2 beta minus 1, right? So I have those two things there. Then to get the MRS, right, your MRS is just the negative of the slope of the indifference curve, which is just u1 over u2. So I'm left with this particular form here. Then I can just merely simplify it, uh, and, and it's in this form. So notice that uh, it is homothetic in this case because it depends only on the ratio of the amounts of the two goods. Notice this is the ratio of the amounts, ratio of the amounts, right? Not on a sheer quantity in and of itself, right? So it depends on the ratio of the amounts. Now, What's an example of a type of utility function that does not adhere to that? Well, you have your quasi-linear utility function, which looks like this. So if you take um, the derivative of this function, that's u uh, equal to x1 plus ln x2, you get the derivatives here, which we found this to be u1. Right? If you take the derivative of that with respect to a uh, good one, so that's just 1 because this one becomes 0. Then if you do that for u2, uh, derivative of ln x2 is just 1 over x2. So you get an MRS equal to x2, which is a shear quantity. So it's not a ratio. So this particular quasi-linear utility function is not uh, or does not exhibit uh, homothetic preferences. So that's it for this short video on special indifference curves and homothetic preferences. In the next video, we're going to start with the utility maximization process. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.